Hello survivors, welcome to Sober Gaming, where video games is the only addiction you will ever need. Today, I want to talk about this amazing game called Deep Rock Galactic. Um, so, this is kind of is going to be a little bit of a uh, review. I'm not going to use the script. Well, I'm going to use like a bullet point, but not the script uh, and see, well, how it goes. So, uh, Deep Rock Galactic, so the basic premise of the game, you are playing one of the four dwarfs and you're working for the company that sends you to a planet where you need to do a couple of different missions. Uh, mainly those missions going to be collect some resources. This is a co-op game, so you can, uh, it's one to four players co-op game. And the interesting part about this game is when you go in there and try to do all those missions, you have a lot of different enemies, bugs, that will try to kill you. And they come in waves as well as, well, you can meet them just while you're mining. Because there's these missions repeat itself, you can actually modify the missions. Um, there's a couple of different modifiers. So for example, mission length over here, you can go from one to three and depending on how much of the primary objective you're going to do. So for example, in here, there is a level two mission length. So you're going to rescue two mules. If it would be three mission lengths, you would rescue three mules. Of course, there is hazards. Yes. So there is hazards level over here that you can change yourself, uh, meaning how difficult the enemies are going to be. So how many enemies, uh, how many waves, how many enemies in each wave, um, and how much health is they gonna have. So this increases the hazard bonus, which will transfer into the resources and the money. Then there is cave complexity. So how difficult is the terrain? Um, a lot of the resources that you need to mine on the cave complexity are gonna be, for example, on the uh, ceiling um, or there's going to be very hard to get through because the caves are going to be like huge not just the small tunnels and of course there's different biomes over here and each biome have different um, hazards that you're going to encounter right so for example in the salt pits I think there's a bunch of lava and the uh, glacial strata there's going to be cold and for example, in fungus box, there's gonna be toxic gases. So you will need to be careful with that. Right there. I need because of that, you can, you know, you can be very flexible in the missions. You're gonna want to do like the uh, easy mission or hard mission. Then there is always a couple of missions with unique challenges. So for example, in here, as you can see on the right hand side, there is warning shield disruption. So you not gonna have any shields on that mission. However, there is a gold rush, so you will have uh, quite a bit of gold. Uh, I believe gold rush means that you, when you kill an enemy, you receive a little bit of a gold, but I might be wrong on that one. So, and for example, in here, gold rush again. So there is quite a few like challenges or uh, either, either a, a good parts of the mission or a bad part of the mission, depending on how, how well, what you're gonna get. So critical weakness that in this mission, you're gonna inc uh, deal increased damage to the critical spots on every single bug. Because this is game is uh, co-op, when you go to the highest difficulty, so you have the three mission lengths, you have the cave complexity, and you have, for example, work environment is lethal or extreme, it gets pretty tough. You will need to have a very, very good team to actually, well, succeed because you're going to have, you're going to work as a team and there's going to be a lot of things that, well, require teamwork. So because the missions are getting very tough, um, you will have four to choose out of four dwarves. So the first one, Angie, my main, uh, Angie does have a lot of utility. So um, every single dwarf is going to have the primary weapon, secondary weapon, uh, some kind of a unique weapon to its to his class, utility, um, grenade, armor, uh, pickaxe, and flares. So in term, in case of the scout, he has a shotgun. He does have a well. Usually, it is a uh, grenade launcher. Then he can place some turrets, turret or turrets. 
Uh, and then he has a platform gun. So basically when you shoot the platform gun, it's gonna build up a platform where you shoot. So enemy, well, so your allies or you can climb the platform and get into tough spots. Obviously, couple of grenades and armor. They're very useful character, love him. Probably the best character to play solo. Then, of course, you do have a gunner. So he does have a machine gun, uh, an amazing pistol. Uh, he does have a shield, uh, so enemies cannot spit at you and stuff like that. And then utility, he does have a zipline. So he actually puts the zipline and all the dwarves can use it. Obviously, he has uh, some grenades, armor, uh, pickaxe, and flares. So he's going to be the main damage dealer. Uh, he's going to be amazing in those elimination missions. Next, we have a scout, the most mobile uh, dwarf out of them all. He does have a machine gun, a uh, double barrel shotgun, flare gun. So his utility item is actually he puts a f he can shoot out a flares that's going to stick to walls and stay there for quite a few. Uh, second like I think 30 45 seconds so very useful in those very cave complex missions where you need some lighting on the on the on the ceiling so you have to have him and of course he has grappling hook so he can grapple to the surfaces and actually fly there um, grenade uh, obviously pickaxe flares uh, armor great done with that so and the last one is the driller so the drill is kind of unique because he has a flamethrower, so he is very good against crowds. Uh, he also has a small pistol. He does have cluster charge, so these are the C4 that he can place and detonate. But his utility item is actually those two drills. So after you collect all the resources, you need to get out, right? You need to get into the spot where they're going to send you a rocket that you need to climb on and get away. In most cases, you need to go all the way back through all the cave complexity. But if you have this driller, you can just drill straight to the rocket if he's good. And uh, well, save some time. So amazing. Uh, he does have uh, access. I th this one is the new ones. I think he throws them and they explode. Not sure though. Obviously, pickaxe, uh, flares, and armor. Whew. Um, so every single uh, dwarf has a lot of upgrades a lot of upgrades so every single weapon has well uh, different upgrades and they're very different in terms of your gameplay how you want to play it depending on mission you're doing and so on obviously um you want them all uh, to increase your well strength uh however if you're not playing a character you can only like as soon as you start playing a character you can only uh, do like two upgrades but the more you play him the more it's gonna unlock so for example I haven't played heavy gunner much that's why I didn't level up him to uh, level 8 so I cannot use these upgrades of course you, there's not only the weapon upgrades but you can do the utility upgrades you can buy different grenades you can uh, increase your armor stats uh, well, obviously some very helpful stuff for your pickaxe and the flares but that's not all um, obviously you can change the different builds on depending on what mission you're doing um, so that is very useful or what like team comp you're doing but there's also a perks right here so uh, by completing some milestones you will uh, get these stars right so for example completely 10 egg hunt missions uh, right I have 8 out of 10 as soon as I complete two more I'm gonna have get two stars with those stars, you can actually buy these upgrades that you can put the perks. Perks. You can buy these perks that you can put on every single dwarf. So, for example, um, you now deposit valuable valuables into an enemy mule and drop pot 20% faster, or you revive the teammates faster, or you can carry more. Um, you get more uh, re more health uh, from the red sugar. Stuff like that. And then there's different levels and so on and so on. Very useful. And the, the coolest part is that you uh, can upgrade them right over here. And then you do need to um, increase the, like the level of your dwarf in order to unlock all the slots. And the one thing I forgot to mention is that you do have different types of weapons. So, for example, I just unlocked this cannon, uh, Breach Cutter, deals a shit tons of damage instead of my grenade launcher. 
Uh, love it. In order to do that, you do have these assignments. So these ones are quests. So in order to unlock the new weapon, you need to do a quest. And it's going to have three different missions that you need to do in order to unlock. Basically, you're getting a new license for your weapon, which is amazing. A lot of progression. There's obviously um, missions for promotion. For example, if you've played the drill quite a bit and you already leveled him up to level 25, which is maximum, you can promote him. To my understanding, uh, because I haven't done that, to my understanding, you will unlock this perk. So you will have another slot for one of the perks, which is amazing. So as you can see, there is a lot of progression in this mission and this game. Uh, weapon upgrades, perks upgrades, uh, different weapons and stuff like that. And you can do, well, four dwarves, so you have a lot of shit to do. When you try to upgrade stuff, you will need to spend money that you earn on the mission, but you will also need to spend resources. So when you go into the mission, <clears throat> right here you obviously gonna do the main objectives and stuff like that but while you're doing all that objective there is two types of resources in every single mission that you can mine for yourself for the upgrade so in this uh in this mission for example on the left hand side there is uh magnite and humanite humanite whatever so you can mine those resources just for those upgrades Obviously, different biomes of different resources that you can mine. And you will need a lot of it because to upgrade four dwarves, well, it takes a while. I've been, I have like 60 hours in this game and I only leveled up two dwarves. Not two max, but two dwarves. Um, and there's four, so there's quite a bit. Then, when you upgrade everything, you can spend those resources for cosmetics and it's amazing uh, so as you can see there is hats there is beards there is armor uh, there is different faces face mask well face colors which is odd but okay um, eyebrows mustaches beards and then well another part of a beard um, so yeah Quite a bit of upgrades and st in terms of cosmetics. In the game, there's 30, more than 30 different enemies in the game, uh, bugs, and you can meet them in different missions. There are, every single bug or an enemy has a weak point. So if you shoot that weak point, you're gonna deal, deal massive damage to them, which is amazing because, well, it kind of gives it complexity to the game a little bit. Uh, you will need different equipment and different loadout depending on the mission, depending on the biome, depending on the objective, uh, which is cool, as well as the different comp uh, for the objective. For example, if the cave complexity is very, very, very tough, I would rather have two scouts and two engineers because they work well together. The, the engineer put the puts the platform and the scouts just jump on the platform instead of you know climbing or has spending way too much platforms. A lot of the enemies have uh, crowd control abilities so some of the bugs can just grab you and fly away with you. At what point you will need your team to survive. Some uh, for example there is a, the most annoying enemy is cave leeches. Uh, if you remember Half-Life there's going to be a bug on the top of the ceiling that's going to grab you and suck you in and kill you. While he's killing you, someone will need to actually shoot him or kill him before he, he gets you because, well, obviously you can't. All good playing with the team, amazing. As I said, you will have to have a very good team comp and very good communication to succeed in the most difficult missions. However, if you don't have friends like I do, um, you will, you can play alone. The developers are amazing group of people that actually made it possible to play alone, but not alone. So you do have this little drone called Bosco. This little drone will escort you while you're playing alone. He can mine, he can shoot, uh, he can revive you. Um, you can actually tell him what to mine, where to look, what to um put his light on and or what enemy to attack the best part is you can actually upgrade him as well so he gets stronger and stronger you can put rockets on him so and you you can just say to him hey shoot that enemy with rockets and he will do that he's an amazing buddy 
excellent strategy on developer's team to make yourself a small buddy that actually helps you. And he's incredibly useful and can be very powerful. Also, of course, have a, an amazing AI. In terms of developers, I haven't played this game in a couple of months and a lot of things changed. So uh, we do have now this bar that where you can drink uh, some beer. Uh, they started to add quite a few different things. So for example, now uh, when you mine, right, you, you could always hit the small box with a pickaxe and not to waste ammo. But now you can actually do a power attack that's going to deal quite a bit of damage, which is amazing. I, they, they added it quite recently. So the developers actually are amazing because they kind of uh, do those updates and those uh, little tweaks that are incredibly helpful and incredibly makes this game much better. Right now, um, you can buy this game, I think, for about uh, 30 bucks. So you can buy this game for about 30 bucks right now, which is pretty good price for such a game. Uh, obviously not a AAA game, but 30 bucks, I think it's worth it every single penny of it. Uh, if I would do, I would put it a score 9 out of 10 if you're playing solo, 10 out of 10 if you're playing with a group of people. Because this game is amazing, it's gonna suck you in for quite a few hours. As I said, I'm, I've played this game for over 50 hours and I still have a ton of things to do. Um, so yeah, this is kind of an, my review of the game. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was constructive and, uh, well, um, hope you liked my review. Please leave me some uh, feedback in the comments section below and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya!